letting them redo the bans. I forget exactly what was happening if Darshan had like been spamming click and hit Alistair. Either way, Clister was the first ban. Lissandra still banned away by Renegades. Tom Kench off the field as well. No poppy. Ah, okay. So if any at all targeted at Remy, it would only be a single ban. Uh, so they might just let that Thresh uh, go over to her. Okay. Yeah, blue side Graves ban. Interesting. So maybe Aphromoo wants it for himself. I still think it's a really big takeaway to yeah. steal away Alistar, but Alistar Gangplank is up. At, oh, Gangplank is up. Gangplank right. is down. Gangplank, Gangplank is taken. Even above them. All right. And who he and Darshan could both do very well in the champion. We've seen Darshan play Gangplank, uh, specifically into Fiora, I believe it was. And it was a more difficult matchup for him. But that's going to be the pickup. So the Corky and the Alistar, two very big champions, are up for Renegades if they want. Yeah. Does look like CLG don't feel the Alistar is as much of a threat with Kalista off the board, you know, without giving Remy the pretty free uh, entry into a team fight. Uh, I, I guess they're okay with giving it away. Still got eyes on the Corky. But taking their time. And I think it's always very smart for a professional team to take as much time as possible so that you can have the discussions around, okay, what would they take if we did this? Because planning the decision tree for three bands is a lot of different you know possibilities. I think CLG are happy with this takeaway here because I'm pretty sure they wanted Smithy on Rek'Sai anyway, so uh, he will go Cinder Hulk. I mean, his his Elise game uh, definitely yeah. had, was low impact, not able to Pretty land weak. a lot of cocoons. So yeah, Corky does get taken. I think that one is not a surprise at all. Renegades discuss and they decide those were the champions they wanted. Alistair North Resh. Uh, changing hands, actually. So uh, neither team rushing for those picks, actually, on either side. Maybe going down in priority from what we expected. Or the teams are wrong, one of the two. And CLG. I'm a, yeah, I'm actually curious what who he will play into Corky. Uh, since he's been so good at the Corky side of the matchup, Yeah. Uh, really, we've seen the most popular pick be Victor against it for wave clear, you know, to stall out any sort of mid-game poke. There's the Rek'Sai, as you identified. Caitlyn comes through for Stixay. CLG looking like they want to play that long-range Siege style. But you also have to keep in mind, there is a chance that Corky Flex is down to AD carry. True. That's what uh, Cloud9 did just uh, a couple games ago, actually. And they grabbed the Corky and then waited to show that it was actually going to be Sneaky playing it. Yeah. And who he very well can play Gangplank. He's played it many times before uh, in solo queue. And it does also provide wave clear if you can get your barrel explosions off late game when you lower the cooldown. Um, to clear the waves that way. And again, Renegade's taking their time on this round of picks, but they've got a jungler. I would expect them to leave a flexible solo lane pick for last to try to pin down where the Gangplank is actually going. Gangplank tends to crush most melee matchups and have a harder time against most range matchups as a general sense. And allowing Darshan to flex that, or Huhi to flex that into good matchups can be a risk for Renegades. Yeah, generally CLG, uh, they will trade a lot of outer turrets anyway, so. They okay. don't need to have the Gangplank match up with Corky until later in the game when he does have access to quick barrel chains, and it makes it much easier for him to deal with yeah. uh, ranged champions. Plus, there's the offensive capabilities here. Caitlyn plus Gangplank is ridiculous zone control. If you line up the line of traps in a lane, the siege <laughs> is insane because you can't even get close to pop a barrel yeah. The chain will go off. There's traps everywhere. You can't get around all the barrels and the traps. It's a ridiculous spy game. Yep. Uh, yeah, and you die you know. if you mess up. <laughs> yes, yes. You typically die if the game gets to land barrels on you. So scary stuff here. Renegades have locked in Thresh for Remy. The Lucian does come through for free. So we do know that it is going to be Alex that's playing the Corky, uh, who, by the way, has an abnormally uh, low attack frame, meaning Corky's auto attack comes out very quickly after starting the animation, which mm -hmm. also can help you really mess with barrels because you are stopped for very, very little time when putting an auto attack out there. CLG decide their matchups are going to be Morgana and LeBlanc picked up. So he will take LeBlanc into Corky up there. Darshan is going to be running top lane Gangplank blind. And Kennen will be the matchup here for RF. Rave has got to be doing back flips, back flips right now. Happy about the matchup. Kennen should be pretty good in a Gangplank. Yeah, and plus RF is well versed on the champion. Yeah. He's using him very frequently. So you talked about the difficulty in ranged matchups. Uh, we'll see if RF can punish him. Mm -hmm. And if Crumbs gets much done with this early game Elise. And that could be a really big thing here. Early game snowballing can decide games regardless of how the competitions are actually lined up and regardless of how good the teams and players may be. Snowballing is snowballing. Cannon will be able to flank into the siege composition if you can get behind Stix A and Co. This could be a lot of damage, a lot of CC uh, lent as the team pushes in. Even Alex Itch can engage a bit on this Corky, so 
definitely there are tools in for Renegades to break that CLG siege. Yeah, the playmaking ability of Corky with the package uh, is no longer underestimated after everyone's been seeing it. I feel like he's it, yeah. so popular, especially from the solo lane. So I think that as soon as that alarm goes off, everybody watches, you know, what direction is Corky going? It's kind of involved into now Corky's, when they pick up the package, they'll go away that they're not actually going to finish walking sure. to, because everybody knows that you do get that small amount. And remember, it only lasts for 60 seconds. So when you hear that siren, you know, you know, count the timer, count one minute, mm -hmm. and you're safe afterwards. Now, guys, you at home have seen the champion select. You've seen the comps. Send your votes to at Esports on Twitter. Use hashtag CLGWIN or hashtag RENWIN for the Renegades. And tell us who's going to be winning this game. We are on to the rift for our 10th game of the weekend, our fifth game of the day. And here we go to close out week three, CLG versus Renegades. Teams are contained inside the base gates till now. And out they go, fanning out as one does. All right, right now, it uh, looks like fanning out for defensive wards from Renegades, whereas CLG, maybe they'll go with their same old invade up the red side. Ooh, who he pushed them back to. They've CLG done got it. to go in over through a and brush. over. I mean, this is, this is something they've done so many times, though. And, uh, Crumps will get vision. Oh, they what? The buy just barely exhausted on Crumps already flashed. They got the barrel fire, and wow! Somehow, just barely landing the binding. First blood for CLG. So they are pretty sure they, a couple patches ago, reduced the width of Morgana binding intended as a nerf, but it snuck right by the spiderling there. Aphromu adjusting very quickly to the new width of that binding and lands it onto Crumbs. Crumbs, wow. as well, did not expect that to land, or he oh. would have obviously flashed much earlier. But man, look at this binding. He threads right by it. Spiderling not doing its job there. <laughs> They're so skinny, the, the head box doesn't really register that easily. Yeah. Skill shots hit the edge of models, so. All right, well, unlucky start there for Crumbs yeah. and Renegades as First Blood does go over to the mid lane. Who he on LeBlanc, an extra Doran's ring versus Corky is going to be very scary for Alex. And that was going to be yeah. their big lane. That was going to be their their lane with a lot of mid game power to rush to Trinity Force. Yeah. We'll see if Hoofy can actually keep him down now because LeBlanc all in is definitely one of the more scary things for that mid lane Corky. I want to talk a little bit about the mechanics of the dark binding there because I know it's going to be a post, but like, whoa, how this binding hit? Uh, yeah. like, uh, so keep in mind, almost all projectiles are actually above the ground, like visually. Like they're, they're still anchored to, you know, an X, Y axis. But if you're looking at it from the camera angle, it being above the ground makes it look like it's farther up than something walking on the ground. Yeah, it's it. So it, it, via camera angle, it looks like it's going over a spiderling. But if you were to see from top down, it would be more to the side. Yeah, normal perspective rules apply. Yeah. Uh, the early level two there, phosphorus bomb landing. Well played by Alex, and uh, extra Doran ring or not, Alex does get a very good trade off there. Plus, he's got that corrupting potion. Mm -hmm. Starts chugging it for the extra tick of damage. That's definitely something you need to keep in mind when you go with that starting item. Crumbs does get his own Raptor uh, secured. Um, but yeah, start chugging that while you're still in combat so you can get the extra damage off. Even gets the ward kill. Yeah, you have plenty of time with that one. He was totally okay there. CLG, of course, near the top lane. Darshan oh, comes in. No! Oh, no! Darshan comes in to help with the cannon kill. And look at Renegades trying to match the lane matchups here. And they do get in before the wave really reaches the turret. So Freeze will be able to get the CS pretty cleanly. He's got the cannon. That's okay. what matters. Yep. Got the melees, too. They're actually playing the last hitting game really, really well. Yeah, Remy we helping. Hit. Oh. The attack wasn't ready in time for Freeze. Yep. Didn't have enough attack speed there. Well, too really much help properly. for people up in the top lane. And now you want mirrored lanes. Or, sorry, uh, reversed lanes. Yeah. Renegades do. Interesting. So they don't want to try and go with the cannon versus uh, Gangplank. Rather try and force that uh, swap here. And because they swapped again, CLG, uh, lose out a little bit of time getting back down to the bottom. Let's see if that does pan out in the advantage here. Yeah. Onto Alex. And I like this. Who he actually able to jump back to the range where his tether is still on the Corky, but he's outside of Gatling gun range, which is just sort of a, an increasingly built advantage there. So Renegades are going to recall again here immediately the duo lane, and they're going to try and find bottom as well. They yeah. do not want to swap towers. Right, Renegades wants the two on two, and CLG yeah. wants the mismatch planes. 
it looks like to me. Or yeah, or it's the, or it's the turret pushing thing, but they've been trying to seek out uh, Freeze and Remy versus Stixie and Aphromoo and yeah. RF versus Darshan. Easy barrel kill. Yeah, uh, Caitlyn plus Morgana early game. Eh. So far, RF doing a great job of timing his auto attacks against these barrels. Darshan last thing what he can. But you're going to see 18 to 4 in minions is not a good thing for this gangplank. Hmm, brush camp here from CLG is going to use up a lot of Smithy's time, jungling time. If they're not successful, Crumb's starting to catch up here. You know, after that really rough early start there, giving up his flash. Ooh. That W land that he could have ignited for a chance at a kill. Really close stuff there. All is well so far, though. And Cr interestingly, yeah, who, CLG trying to make the big plays. Right now, they're really only winning the mid lane. Yeah. Uh, Crumb's also already early back, so he's got the extra wards coming out of his tracker and his knife, as well as his pink ward. Uh, and that just really speaks to his style that we talk about all the time of being very vision-centric, trying to set that up early. Meanwhile, Smithy will do another full clear of all the small camps. Predicting the dodge there, I believe, uh, Remy. But long enough range that 6A had plenty of time to see the trajectory of the hook and does not dodge into it. Just barely got away. Aphromoot, of course, does have a point in Black Shield here. Smithy looking for a way around, but this Wolf Spirit lets him know what's going on. Crumbs gets some free damage over the wall. Yeah, Smithy's like, ooh, I have a uh, And he's in a really bad sense, spot. But hook does not quite land. That was so close. Still close here. Should have a way out. Flash Cocoon, and look at that. A great find by Aphromoo. No chance at all. They're still putting some damage in, but all is well. I don't know about that one there from Crumb. Yeah, it's a right, Alex. of Huhi. Getting a lot of damage on Alex. Alex forced to run. Valkyrie's away. Level six, LeBlanc. Uh, you've yeah. got to give that up. You cannot hold your ground there. I'm actually kind of surprised that Huhi took the uh, distortion back and didn't just stay up front. Even taking, you're forced to take another couple autos, but maybe he didn't have the cooldowns to finish him off. Yeah, maybe not. Ignite still used. No heal burn, though, by Alex Itch, who he thought he had the damage to win the all-in. Wasn't the case. Alex recalls, walks back to lane. Great hook on Aphromoot, but there's no follow-up there, so the hook just means about 80 damage and not much else. Quick laugh from Remy. No recall stop there from Aphromoot either. And missing one CS under the turret. All said and done, though, CLG got that first blood at the very start of the game. And Renegades have outlaned so hard, the gold is equal. Well, they've they've actually forced the recall. So remember, it was that constant right. recalling there from CLG. I, I, to be fair, yes, they have outlaned as well. You know, as they've sh uh, shook out here, RF Legendary um, has been punishing Darshan up in the top lane. You know, abusing that range mismatch. Um, but yeah, ma uh, CLG choosing to lose out on some yes. minions by going to answer the lane swap. RF, oh, another one you can uh, trigger Thunderlords with. Empowered W plus active W. Yep. Two stacks for the auto attack, one stack for the active. So, whittling him down with Thunderlords, who he got blue buff. That was given over by Smithy, thankfully. Who he is winning the lane matchup. Of course, the early 400 gold helps and is still winning in CS over Alex each year. Smithy clears way of pink. Warden says, hey, remember how top lane's aggressive? You better not do that anymore. I'm Rek'Sai, be afraid. Another quick trade, who he lands QRE. Yeah, who he actually attracting a lot of attention here now. Can you predict? Can Remy predict the hook? Can she do it? I think she showed. Mm, okay. Because at some point, who he was gonna W to kill the caster minions, and if she guesses right, hook line of sinkery goes down. <laughs> I heard the I get it yell. I mean, it wasn't that clever, but I'm glad you got it. Thanks. <laughs> You're fine. I thank you guys. But we have a game to play, guys. The jokes aren't important. It's the League of Legends play that is. 200 gold lead only for Counter Logic Gaming. Dual lane. Plus 20 minions, though some are on the field. Stick say and freeze. Doing battle as AD carries. Hook. Dodged. Yeah. Keeps uh, predicting dodges upwards. But Stick say has yet to dodge upwards on camera. One of these times he'll do it, maybe. First package of the game. Within 50 seconds of it spawning, too. So Alex, like, recalled right away for that. Yeah. And his, his purchase is terrible, by the way. Just has so little money, he got a couple of crystals and so, boots. The most often, uh, ooh, I see it used uh, in bottom lane while bottom lane is still under-leveled. But you would yeah. need more support. 
um, I believe, because Gangplank ultimate coming down would be instant support there from CLG. I think they could. Whereas gone. you're gonna have to wait for the teleport. RF Legendary is definitely in a position to teleport down, um, and a cannon ultimate would also be devastating. Mm -hmm. Um, but it would take a little bit longer to finish channeling. Yeah. Positionally, it felt like they actually could have sent Crumbs and Alex down there. Yeah. And then had the threat of an RFTP and just straight dive CLG 30 seconds ago. Alex instead walks to the mid lane. After he clears it, maybe he'll go for it. But really not seeing a lot happen with this Corky. That might have been a missed opportunity, to be honest. Good binding there for a little bit of harass. Close one. Smithy actually doing an invade right now. Does uh, is seen by a pink ward, uh, as well as that mid green ward to clear out. But he's happy to just play the farm game, uh, especially on Rek'Sai. And right now the makings of Azonias for RF Legendary. Smithy has gone towards the Center Hulk. No, uh, no rushed Sight Stone that you assume he'll get one since he went for Chilling Smite here. Meanwhile, Karams did in fact go for Smite Stone, so he's already got the wards. You mentioned that much earlier in this game. Zarshan again being poked out, but actually catching back up in this lane matchup, yep. right? RF gets free CS for killing barrels, and it's 66-61. Really impressive play by Darshan to, in a way, win this lane matchup. I mean, it gets so much easier as you level up as Gangplank, and yes. the cooldown on your barrels drops, um, and the timer on them. Yeah. The fuse, I guess, drops. Mm -hmm. Crumbs gets revenge in the pink ward. Has two wards inside his uh, tracker's knife right now, and we'll see just what he tries to get vision of. Remy roaming around, her sight stone's done, and plops one in front of the raptors. No real deep wards, though. Thing is, I forget when they last saw Ox Smithy, but Renegade's had a fair bit of room on this bottom side of the map to get some wards down. Anytime you see the jungler on the other side of the map, that's your cue to get deep wards down as support, because you know you're not going to really get jumped on. You can shove the wave and get a bunch of deep wards down. As it stands, they can't track CLG's Smithy that easily. Nope. And currently hovering around mid lane here, getting a deep ward of his own. Luhi. Despite the first blood, uh, Alex has been able to CS pretty well. Yeah. Well, he is going for the early Abyssal, which is just such an efficient item and helps out so much in this matchup with uh, a lot of extra magic damage being added to Corky's kit due to the auto attack after the rework. Looks like Crumbs found the pink ward. So Smithies was very short-lived there. Of course, they find the pink that was put down by Renegade's bottom lane as well, and they're just playing the ward trading game right now. Got to collect them all. RF really close to completing that uh, Zonia's Hourglass, in which case Renegade's team fight gets significantly yeah. more threatening. What we just saw there in the bottom lane is kind of the way you should always play bot lane. When you see a cannon minion get low, they will go for that last hit. So both the hook and the piercing light from Freeze came out, as even did the Black Shield from Afro, knowing they would go for this play. So everyone was like, at this time, Six is going to be attacked by stuff. Yeah. And everyone played it more or less optimally. Just doubly you know? so. Yeah, doubly so for cannons, but yeah. you can do the same thing on melees. Ooh, Black Shield comes in late, so Six A did get hooked in Afro. Not quite on the ball for that one. It has attracted a lot of attention, though. Both junglers, as well as Huhi roaming down. With how low CLG's bot lane is, they can't really participate in this fight. Afro could, I guess, try to exhaust an ult, but 6A could really only just send snipes down from the back lines. Huhi's roam turns into pretty much nothing here. And the gold league keeps fluctuating back and forth. Gangplank gets free money by being Gangplank. CLG getting pushed down to the bottom lane. Again, another trade. Huhi getting some damage on Alex. He can never quite get the kill. Yeah. Ooh, Gangplank ult was used to clear the wave here. So uh, Darshan gonna ha have a little bit less threat up on the top side. Ooh, with the all he nearly landed the jump forward and actually can't stay for the second half of the E to land. So a little bit of damage missed thanks to a good Valkyrie and good counterattack by Alex Itch. Yeah, the drawback of doing the uh, Abyssal is that Abyssal doesn't have a mana regeneration uh, built into it that something like Morello's or the Frost Queen's does. So he does get extremely low going for all these uh, harassment moves. Mm -hmm. Rep gets to kill a pink. Remy's coming in for who? He goes for the flash, the play, the hook. But it's the clone. So Crumbs jumps in. He gets the damage. There's a kill. Renegade's the first one on the board. Great play by Remy. Great follow up by Crumbs. Three flashes, a heal, and an ignite, I believe. But they got the kill. They got the kill. <laughs> 
<laughs> Thanks for <Word>. reiterating. <laughs> I'm with you on this one, Kobe. All right, what else will I yell alongside let's, you? Let's see what CLG will get back next. Let's see what CLG will get back next. CLG. Smithy, what? CLG. I don't know. <laughs> okay. I mean, they have a female Counter-Strike team. They missed such an opportunity. <laughs> oh, oh, Remy does get hit with the bind. Remy getting a ton of damage. She might go down. The exhaust on his stick safe. Gets the kill. Now Afro oh, flashes flash. away from his own base, but lands the bind on a freeze, but walks into crumbs. The flash means nothing. The team comes in, picks up a kill back. Yeah, only delays the death there. But Darshan actually canceled his teleport, so they gave up on Aphromoo, and it was actually a good choice because he does get to shove the wave into the turret. Looks like he's backing off very quickly, though. Um, the call as, that Alex had done. As Alex, Alex may have showed right when he picked up the package that he was going top. I don't think he had it yet. It was just a regular roam then, I, I guess. it was a regular recall input. All right, well, it ended up being the one-for-one one kill here as both supports do end up going down. But again, uh, the cancel teleport there for Darshan meant a couple more minions. Mm -hmm. I think that did transition into Dragon. Nope, not into Dragon. They actually just recalled instantly afterwards. Yeah. It's not that very big deal. Uh, this I guess you didn't have it, you're right. Yeah, see? You All really right. have to respect right. that. That's, that's the only reason you would really respect that uh, rotation that much that much. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, Darshan would be confident to take another wave there, pressure the turret, but Corky package. Yeah, I misremembered the cooldown. I thought it was seven minutes, not five. So it, it was back up, and I was like, oh, it couldn't be. I'm just Then I, who? I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> well done. All right, a lot of damage coming out of Huhi. Still trying to chuck Alex Edge down, but of course, with all the long range ordinance that this Corky has, Alex really can just get the farm anyway, and even push before Huhi can, so. Uh, no major concerns here for the Renegades mid laner. Yeah, honestly, it is going to come down to that uh, big team fight. Uh, first big team fight that we see. Depending on who gets the better AoE off, you really have to respect the Gangplank uh, barrel chaining as soon as he does get uh, Trinity Force here pretty soon. But Corky as well, uh, combined with a level 11 cannon ultimate. Definitely threatening. Absolutely. RF for the next three minutes, though, does not have teleport. He may have to wait. Dark Flat, Dawn. Yeah, Flash is really the main cooldown that you look for okay. uh, with Kennen. Kennen with Flash, terrifying. Kennen without Flash, eh, eh. Just a Yordle. Whatever. Yeah, I know, I missed a Cannon, or a Caster Minion. <laughs> Silly freeze. It's okay, though. 171 to 135. Absolutely crushing this bottle in right now. Renegades have gotten their first turret as well. And it puts them in the, really for one of the first times all game, in a, a you know, small lead here for Renegades. Ward's getting killed back and forth, as very few champions have been. All right, with Caitlyn showing bottom, let's see if Renegades try and force something, because that level 11 flash cannon definitely is, has the opportunity to collapse down here. CLG are very deep in Renegades territory, and all five Renegades members are top. Well, well Alex just takes a chunk, and who he goes right back out, no. Crumbs has Crumbs. to be careful here. Chillings might land no Cocoon, but they're going to put in a plenty of damage. Summoner heal used by Alex to get Crumbs out of the fight. And Cocoon back onto Xmithy, who is tanky. Who he walks in to get some damage. Can't land the skill shot onto Alex, though. So even though nothing happened there, I have to highlight that uh, last couple minutes just because that was a very risky play from CLG. They're showing their AD carry bottom, yet they're going for a deep invade on Renegade's territory when none of Renegade's bottom lane are showing. So that very well could have been a punish by Renegades, uh, you know, and get something back versus CLG there. Uh, they weren't able to, you know, make a play or, uh, you know, capitalize on that collapse there, but it was an opening. Now, well, thankfully for CLG fans, that wasn't killed, and they're going to be okay. 400 gold down. Top lane cleared out by Darshan. The ulti didn't do much. Well, it got things low. The barrel cleared it off, though, and Renegades were unable to keep pushing for that top lane outer turret. Rift Herald will be picked up, though. You can't push him off this, so we'll see if Freeze and Crumbs go for it. Nah. This one goes to the AD carry. I think they're, well, they're trying to get this turret, so. Yeah. Just because I am, you know, pro Rift Herald on junglers doesn't mean that it's always uh, for junglers. You can use it for buffing up the minions as well. Looks like it'll be enough on this way, but similarly, CLG had pushed the bottom lane out. That still is going to stand at a one turret lead for Renegades. His top lane will almost certainly go down as well. And Renegades continue the turret advantage. This game started in matched lanes, so this is Renegades building their advantages via outplaying CLG. CLG the kings of lane swap, but really not necessarily the kings of two on twos and the basic matchups there. Renegades getting the top lane counterpick and also just a pretty darn strong duo lane of 
Freeze and Remy. Yeah, I mean, it definitely does fluctuate depending on the matchups that you pick into on in, in a particular game, obviously. Um, but let's see what CLG do next, because they do acquire that 6% first dragon buff. Mm -hmm. And it's actually at a fairly decent time to grab. You know, two item power spike for the mid laner is significant. AD carry yeah. honing in on two items as well. It also really Ooh. helps Gangplank a bit. Is that a missed missile? Oh, is he going for the Ooh. Trinity Force proc activation only? Yeah. Gene. Well, it's always weird because, so Trinity Force, when you cast a spell, will affect an auto attack already in flight. So sometimes you won't expect to okay, kill he, the minion, and then you toss a missile, and you're like, oh crap, the thing I was going to hit just got killed. Crumbs gets away with the lantern, good save by Remy, and Renegade's not losing too much. They got some damage on mid, but they're okay. Vision I, I actually uh, has dwindled for both teams here. Yeah. And it really is just purely defensive now. So we'll probably see both teams play a bit of a trepid game here. And it's honestly pretty lacking for CLG who don't have a Sight Stone or Tracker's Knife on their jungler. Smithy is actually rushing the Aegis yeah. to give his team a ton of magic resist because of Ken and Elise and Corky. I understand it for the combat stats, but it will hurt CLG's vision game. As of right now, Renegade's just got a decent amount into the blue side jungle. But again, can you even fight the team fight? Because of that giant magic resist aura really adds a lot to the first team fight here. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned, there's a lot of magic damage on the Renegade squad. And it's not just the Aegis that matters. The aura goes from 10 to 15 MR when you upgrade to Locket or Banner of Command. So I still has like a 1,200 gold premium to go for to make that aura even stronger. You really get the power out of that. Alex forced to package away. This is, I believe, the third pickup, and none have been aggressive just yet. It's just Alex hasn't had the space to do so. Seals you playing with the proper respect. Yeah, I wonder if Alex himself turns his current longsword into a hex drinker because of that burst. As of right now, though, full traps covering the tri brush. Mm -hmm. You cannot walk through, and Smithy's on the wrong side of those traps. Will he be able to get out here? He could pop an ultimate down to the bottom side. And he does. All right. Good escape. Smithy is fine. Hey, this, though, is not. Oh, man, binding over the wall on top of a big board. There's the kill. <laughs> Darshan totally earned that kill. He saw they, the need, over saw they time. needed a little bit more damage yeah. there to secure that one. Just to make sure. I mean, if he flashed the new lantern. Was, binding was about to wear off. Yeah. I mean, he was rooted by the LeBlanc, but you know, what does pretend Darshan did the right thing there? Uh, looking for a play. Keep in mind, this is a 4v5. Nice black shield by Aframu. They're going to stay safe. The game is tied in gold, though. Renegades, again, up one turret. CLG up one kill. The farm, the various different people are ahead. Some are behind on both these teams here. And it's been a, a battle of trying to find these one-off advantages. A small fight here, a small fight there. Forcing a recall, getting some turret damage. Take another look at this binding. Alex put down the pink ward right then just in case too. But the ward CLG had previously placed behind the red buff sees him trailing there. And you can just guess the end of his path. Yeah. You know, he didn't change directions or anything. So pretty easy binding there for Aphromu lining it up for the kill. And Stuff. hand delivered to uh, Darshan in the bottom yes. lane. Yes, <laughs> hand delivered to Darshan, who is the true carry of CLG, of course. Splitting damage on Alex. Hex Drinker picked up for Darshan as well, actually. So uh, more respect for the magic damage here on the CLG lineup. And if the magic damage burst can't get through, this could be very effective. That said, Freeze is getting very big here. Also, very surprising, despite the records, Renegades being 1-4, and four, actually winning the fan vote. I would not expect that against CLG, but such is the power of the uh, Renegades fandom. And to be fair, they're playing it much closer than many would have expected here. When CLG is cha challenging second place and Renegades are challenging last. Yep. We still have yet to see uh, the Kennen Ultimate flash in here. Mm -hmm. Could very well earn them a team fight victory. Gold's still extremely close. 
Four points and traps. Six eight can easily set up a whole bunch of pressure. Dark shot getting jumped out by Krems. Gets away, but a flash play by Remy tries to set up the fight. There is the jump in from RF Legendary. He flashed in, popped the zonies, but gets pushed out anyway. Krems is low. Smithy's forced to run. After the front lines, a flash engaged by Smithy, and it picks up Alex Sitch. The who he cloned is absorbing attacks for now. A one That's zero. Why they want Smithy on a Cinder Hulk jungler? Rexai, who was able to take a bunch of damage, then re-engage there. Good job by Smithy biding his time, using Ooh. the flash to go in on Alex. Four to two in kills. Everyone's quite low. Smithy spotted by a ward, but still could look for the turret flank. This will not happen, though, and Renegade successfully defend their mid lane outer turret. Out they go. 700 gold down. All set and done. One kill. He yes. has his hands. And this entire game has been like this. It's, they don't quite have the closing power to get all of the kills. The engage comes in the front, and then there's not quite enough follow-up damage. So it's a game of, of posturing and trying to make the correct plays, and then it's very, very, very close, and doesn't quite turn into a lot. But at some point, especially with the respawn timers now being almost 30 seconds long, this game could explode. All right, so here's the teleport from Arath in the backside, so we can see the full initiation here. He does go for the two backline members, Stixay and Huhe, uh, Huhi. And he did get the stun off, but there are so many summoners available, everybody almost ends up burning their flash. Yeah. As soon as Alex goes in, though, finding from Aframu. And uh, Smithy is also able to jump in after that. And it was such a good ulti by, by RF. He stunned basically everyone, but the rest of Renegades weren't in range to follow up. It felt like they didn't expect Kennen to be there. They were so afraid of LeBlanc hitting them and, and the Caitlyn hitting them that they had sort of waited and was like, oh, they're stunned. Oh, uh... <laughs> and they had no damage to deal. Well, RS first, great flank, they're not turning much. Oh, what a cocoon by Crumbs! But who he will stay alive. But cocoon right in the face through the distortion forward. Yeah. The other thing That's is that, perfect. so Renegades, while you're like, oh, yeah, they do need to fully commit, you know, and try and follow up on this, you have to be very wary of the uh, Gangplank Barrel placement already. True. Uh, for all the damage uh, follow up here from Renegades. Because, you know, as good as a, a nice kind of ultimate on the back line can be, you know, stunning everyone up. A gangplank barrel chain will actually just kill people outright. So. Fair point. And it looks like enough respect was given to Darshan's damage that there was no immediate engage. Huhi, wave fling the best that he can. Smith is around to land some AoE as well, and looks like CLG can hold the mid lane for now. Still only one turret for these guys. 27 minutes in. And as much as Huhi can try to chunk Alex, it's not the most headway. He did go for that hex shanker. Second. Uh, we're looking forward with the longsword, so yeah. hex drinkers on both sides. And early alacrity boots as well for this Corky, so a lot of movement speed. Huh. Of course, you want the magic pen because you're Corky, you need the Sork shoes, but yeah. getting the move speed that Boots of Swiftness would have given you by getting alacrity. I'm really not a big fan of alacrity. It's definitely a very low efficiency, cost, cost efficiency low. there as far as how much move speed you're buying, especially when there are so many other sources of move speed in the game now, but not easily available to Corky. So I guess he really, really wanted that to try and dodge some uh, bindings from Aframu as well as the chains from Kuhi here. Yeah. Could pay off. I mean, dodging one of those bindings will mean the difference between life and death. As we saw in the last team fight, it was the death of Alex. So yeah. What's interesting is if you start doing the math on item costs and whatnot, at a certain point, you just decide that uh, Movement speed quints. I mean, it's all well, relative the to the speed. value you put on it. Right? right. Well, the thing is, like, you can look at your builds and say, if I bring move speed quints, I can get that same move speed and just save 450 gold for a different item. And oftentimes, that's just more efficient. Yeah. And move speed is really interesting, too, just because, yes, it's multiplicative with uh, the percentage increases as well as the flat increases that you're buying, but also there are reduced uh, returns uh, the higher move speed you get as far as how quick you actually end up moving. Alex chunked out again, Ooh. and the Hex Drinker is popped. He didn't actually have the Flash. Hex Drinker would have blocked all the damage from the Gangplank Gold. He even still loses the Hex Drinker, loses the Flash. Heal is still up for him, but will have to recall and heal up with the Home Guard boost that everyone gets. Mid lane Outer does finally go down. CLG getting success with that Siege and pushing up to a 1700 gold lead here. So their advantages are finally building up. Who he? Dodges both skill shots and gets some damage on a crumb. Smithy now in the wings looking for what would be a too risky dive. No binding there. Who he wants in. Freeze on the wrong side, but doesn't get assassinated just yet. And we should credit Who he because uh, there was a lot of speculation. Oh, can he only play Corky? He's only had successful Corky games. Uh, they've done really well. Yes, he did get that first blood super early in the level one, but here we go. A good black shield stops Blade from doing anything. The box actually does nothing as well, so Remy. 
not getting enough of the skills through. RF gonna get slowed down by a barrel, and the team can't follow up, so RF stuck alone. Thankfully gets a lantern and not die to a dark body, but the team is not gonna re-engage from CLG. A chunk comes through, freeze by himself, but pushing CLG away. Oh, luckily for Renegade, somebody thought really quickly there and auto-attacked that barrel. Darshan was about to explode on the other side of the wall, so they were not chunked again. But the first chain there is exactly what we're talking about. Line up the barrel chain, even though RF goes all in, gets the flash off, barrel chain slows and damages Ooh. the back line. Breeze Ignite of it stays alive. Now, who be forced to run Ignite is on him as well, but a chunk onto Alex Sinch, and that will be two kills picked up as Remy goes down to one, and Alex drops to the other. CLG now six to two, and they've got control of the mid lane. They're pushing in for a turret right now. Barrel Chain's gonna slow down Crones, but he's tanky enough to not go down. But still, the push comes through. Cinder Hulk at least is the only real front line that Renegades have right now. But now, three turrets picked up for CLG. Pretty big push right there for them. Finally being able to turn these two kills into an objective for themselves. Secondary turret plus second dragon. Go down easily. Well, maybe Renegades try and chase him out. It's a risky chase for them. Smithy can stay in there and tunnel. Oh, good smite. Darshan forced to run. Cooling does a lot of damage though. And Barrel's force freeze far enough away. CLG should be safe to recall and heal back up and get back on the field. Top lane already being shoved back by Huhi. Mid lane, uh, Renegades will be there first, but we'll see what happens. All right, let's see Huhi going for the burst here. Ooh, flash support as well. And the binding means Alex can't take it for him either. Ends up turning around on Huhi, but outnumbered here as both Crumbs and RF were back in the base or behind the turret there on the left side. Great catch by CLG, the ability to, and the willingness to flash forward and take everything they possibly can. And it's grown CLG a bit of a lead. Like when we've talked about the problems of Renegades, it's been their seemingly inability to start the fights that they want. And we've talked about, oh yeah, get the Alistair away from Remy, which to be fair did, you know, not really happen as much in this game. But <laughs> Decided not to pick. Renegades, right. Like CLG have found ways to get in, whether it's like a flash Binding or something, but CLG have actually gotten these picks, and Renegades have actually kind of been at the mercy of what CLG wants to do and haven't been able to, outside of getting some good pushes and some good landing phases, not been able to sort of exert their will in this game. Oh, and again, remember the point about zoning with the Gangplank plus Caitlyn, the team that CLG have drafted here is just so good uh, at setting up control with these trap spam uh, as well as the uh, barrel chaining just because they were able to snag that first pick gangplank, which is such a high priority. Ooh, sticks, they nearly got hooked under turret. It had turret aggro as well, so that could have been a large amount of health off of Stix A. As it stands, the team is all right. Another chunk of Alex down to half HP. Crumbs taking some pain, but of course, again, it is tank Elise, Ooh. so not the most dangerous. Yeah, good net right there. That was uh, close. He does have quick silver sash, but um, would prefer to hold on to the cooldown. CLG looked for top lane tier two, couldn't quite get it, but they did lock down that outer turret, which means that score is four to zero in turrets. Two to zero in dragon, six to two in kills. CLG have been slowly and steadily building their leads here. It's actually a double agent team as Aphromoo has the banner of command and it's Luke Smithy's locket. Yeah, and they've slowly been moving up their ward line towards the Baron pit now. Three, four crumbs just cleared that one out. They had four standing. I believe Stixa the only one not dropping his yet, still has it in inventory. And uh, they can uh, easily replenish that one as well. So Baron Bates, uh, definitely a real thing as well. You can also use the traps to uh, cut off these jungle entrances, not just great for sieging. Mm -hmm. And we'll see what the next step is then. Remy doing the best that she can to clear these wards away. Puts a lantern down, Cusick Smithy. I think they are going to try and set up for this Baron Bait because face checking into hidden barrels with the possibility of LeBlanc and Morgana picks is extremely scary. Oh, Crumbs gets run out of his own jungle and they're going to try and huddle on turret again. Maybe the siege comes through. Maybe. Right now, RF on the bottom side of the map and has to clear away a mini wave that's pretty close to his own turrets. That was the last. They only have one blue trinket here for Renegades. Uh, with which to check the Baron, and with which to cooldown. check any of these brushes. So they have to be very careful to dodge any bindings that Aphromoo throws out. Smithy thanks the Kulang. That could have been a whole bunch of pain, but yeah, Renegades are out of wards in a way. I don't even think there are any stacks left on the Tracker's Knife or the Sightstone here. 
but they have snuck that pink ward into the Baron pit. And until CLG clears that away, there's no threat of a bait. CLG actually going to reset, and now they are on TP disadvantage. Darshan can global ult to participate in some way, but RF has teleport, whereas Darshan does not. And RF has distortion boots as well, so that will continue to be a lower cooldown. Yeah, so it looks like CLG going to go into farm mode then. They actually retreat from all the wards that they set up around Baron for a while. Renegades still have to be careful about clearing them out, though, because after you see CLG recall, even though we can see the rest of the map and we know all members have recalled, Renegades have no idea. A little block could still be lurking in one of those brush yeah. uh, and easily pop someone. The Renegades have dumped all their wards back into this topside jungle, so they know most of what's happening on this area of the map. Very little vision around Dragon and the Baron Pit itself. But it does allow them to really track the Smithy and all these roams and ganks and dives and whatnot. Yeah. Darshan also able to push up here on RF to the bottom turret, and it looks like they are going to swing everyone from mid right over down to the bottom side and try and take this out Ooh. of the turret. But it's too late. The bottom turret already goes down. CLG assigned their lanes properly, and another turret has fallen thanks to really great map play by CLG. Renegades fought so hard to get the top jungle back, and CLG said, that's cute. Grats on your wards, your bot turret's dead. Yep, by uh, taking away all the vision coverage here from Renegades. They have to take the long way around when transitioning from one objective to the other. Not quick enough, and CLG claims some more global gold for themselves. Before they come back to this top jungle, Aphrom have a couple wards away. Now Smithy and Co. will knock down the Baron ward as well. Blue Trigger already back on cooldown. Freeze has been using that pretty much whenever possible just to put that blue ward down. Yeah. I honestly think that they probably need another one upgraded. But uh, they're sticking with the yellows. They want to try and drop some wards with more permanence. Even though CLG have been very clear that they're willing to spend uh, not only the money, but also the item slots to keep pink wards in inventory to move them around. And two sweepers on CLG means that even with the double yellow trinkets, none of these yellow trinkets are lasting for Renegades. When you're super far behind, generally we see teams flood with pink or uh, blue trinkets so they don't get baited. But uh, CLG gonna actually go for the Baron this time around. Burnt down really quickly. Yeah, try to punish his lack of vision. Crumbs will have to just walk from over the wall. But look at that binding. It guarantees no steal with no contest at all. Counter Logic Gaming takes down Baron at 36 minutes. CLG continue their slow and measured control of this game. All right, that Baron buff is definitely going to be some siege on inhibitor turrets here for CLG now. And we are going to see more of the same from them. So instead of looking at that, let's look at what Renegades can try and do, even though they're so desperate right now. They, well, when's the package coming up? That would at least give them some hope for playmaking. Ooh. We can't track inspect. Yeah, unable to close in. But it's not available now, so <laughs> we know they don't currently have it. And they're just going to have to try and huddle and hope for a misplayed dive there from CLG. You can still punish the dive very heavily with sure a cannon. Thing. Well, speaking of this cannon taking a lot of pain right there, Remy's Lantern doesn't quite come out in time, but RF will survive, and it's a short cooldown anyway. CLG have so far played the game slow and steady, right? Only eight kills in the entire game at 37 minutes and change so far. They're going to keep splitting up the team. Top lane tier two, the only two RF people teleporting that up. Freeze really low. deep. And here's RF on the back lines. Here comes the push in an exhausted early six. It takes some damage. Pops QSS, but Alex is in. Six they force a flash to stay alive, but there's the kill into Alex. Corky is gone. Smithy taking the front line, but will be killed off. A great flay by Remy. And look at that by Freeze. Picks up another kill, but trades his life for it. Both AD carries now gone. The flash, the binding hits. Remy will be dying. It's gotta be. And there's another uh, another kill, a double for Huhi, a three for two in favor of Counter Logic Gaming. Yeah, even though CLG come out way ahead, that was honestly a good attempt by Renegades. They tried to punish uh, the teleport discrepancy there with Darshan not having his available and just rush the back line. But Alex committing that far to follow up on the damage there and try and follow up on RF's initiation meant that Alex was then exposed and he ended up going down as well. So CLG are still able to turn it around and it looks like they will be able to uh, press in on the inhibitor turret as well. Some pretty smart plays. Top lane had no wave left. Mid lane did though, so they pushed right on in and you're gonna get at least some damage on this turret. Yeah, Aphromu also went with the banner of command uh, since Smithy already has a locket. So they were able to banner plus Baron uh, that minion to yep. grab the top one. And that's inhibitor turret down. Not long ago, Darshan had solo dragon. We saw that on your screen. So 
That three boxes up, and the fourth one will be quite a while away as the OG continue to take these small measure advantages where each fight is just slightly in their favor. All right, so let's take another look at this. RF teleporting in. They saw Darshan on the bottom side of the map. So this is a five versus four. This is basically the best attempt they're going to get. But the exhaust onto RF by Afrim, who as soon as he comes in, means not enough damage to finish off Stixay there. Alex exposed because he went to follow up. And they almost were able to get the Caitlyn, but can't finish it off. Freeze flashes in to finish off Stixay, but as you know, who he answers quickly. Yeah, when you got Sork Shoes and Abyssal Scepter, you do true damage to these uh, AD carries. And even though Freeze had I, he's got, yeah. he had a Hex Drinker, I think he got Maw afterwards. Okay. Um, yeah, it just wasn't enough to survive. He got chunked out really hard. You can say that. Chunked out when your whole life bar disappears. Yep. It's a big <laughs> chunk. It's the entire thing. It's the largest chunk possible. That counts, right? Yes, sir. I got a Sir out of that one. Nice. I was so Sir, glad you David Freak Turley, the package is available. All right. <laughs> it's still available. It's still <laughs> being carried by Alex Hitch, like an inverse Quinn situation, kind of. But you know what's not available is the flash for Kennen, which, as we said, takes away so much of the playmaking potential yeah. there. But neither are the flashes of CLG, so theoretically, there's no easy way out, and just maybe something happens. Cocoon just missed onto a Smithy. Renegades have not yet pulled the trigger to go in. This is a tight situation, though. No one hits are dead just yet, and there is a decent gold lead for CLG, but this is not outside of Renegades' yeah. ability to win. Especially if they actually get the stun from RF's ultimate and the package goes over it. Mm -hmm. There's a ridiculous, a ridiculous amount of damage in that package. So he's looking for the chunk. Black Shield is on. Bursts out. Remy. It's a 5v4, and in goes CLG. That was the, that was the cue. That was the sign. Oh man, the damage is already there as Alex has dropped on Corky RF. Not going to buy enough time. A three for zero in this fight, and CLG might have the numbers they need to close the game out. Still some damage from Freeze, but they push in. They're going to knock him down despite the Maw. Who he's staying afloat, and they get the ace as Crumbs is the last one to die. 14 to four. There are minions all. Ready. There is nothing stopping CLG from winning. And in our longest game of the day at a whole 41 minutes, CLG move into second place with the win. Yep, congratulations to CLG and a well-deserved victory there. You had so much pressure, dude. Slow and steady won the race for them. And the early game <laughs> was close. Honestly, Renegades with Freeze won the two on two. They won the early game outside of that first blood that, of course, happened in the in the very, very early part of the game. But they knocked more turrets down than CLG. Yeah, they won a couple of fights. Honestly, such a rough, you know, level one there, where the yeah. LeBlanc gets first blood in the LeBlanc Corky matchup. Who he was able to leverage that into a lot of pressure all game long. And when you've got a Morgana on your team, Aphromu able to lend the Black Shield to who he means that this LeBlanc that has had so much success early game is able to. Uh, poke you with her all-in abilities, yeah. you know, without fear of the hook and without fear of the cocoon locking him down. So, yeah, really hard to combat that towards the late game. And it's honestly looking like who he doing badly is the exception rather than the rule. We said he's only been good on Corky, but is he bad otherwise? Who he did triple the damage of Darshan this game. Gangplank is no slouch <laughs> in terms of yes. damage out. He even stole some kills to the ultimate, but 36,000 damage from who he, uh, roughly double what Stixay did, triple what Darshan did. Uh, a massive performance from the, the rookie mid laner here of CLG, who he put in a lot of work. He won his mid lane. He's the only guy who actually won his lane on CLG. Definitely a big carry for the team, earning them not only uh, a one lane, but also uh, the objectives through chunking Alex constantly. We almost, every time every time we panned mid, Alex, Alex was chunked out, had to go back to base, or had to yeah. use his package defensively uh, to get out of range. <laughs> Beautiful stuff. So, Counter Logic Gaming and Week 3, 4 and 2. The only